Today we are going to discuss about biology first chapter nutrition in 10th class is a food supplying system. In this chapter we are going to discuss a very important topics to be covered in the register syllabus and the students you have to must and should read this topics in the exam point of view. Okay the first topic in this nutrition is autotrophic nutrition. Auto means self and trophic means feeding means self feeding nutrition. The example for autotrophic nutrition is plants. The plants are capable to do their own food when not depending on other organisms. When coming to our human beings or animals, we are depending on other organisms but plants does not depend on other organisms. This type of self-feeding nutritious is known as a autotrophic nutrition. Okay, the plants will make their own food with the process of photosynthesis. Let us know in detail about the photosynthesis process. Okay, the photosynthesis is the process by which green plants containing chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is a green pigment which is then under the chloroplast in the middle of the leaf. Okay, it will produce food substances like glucose, starch from carbon dioxide and water. Well, by using sunlight as a source of energy. Okay, let us go in detail with the photosynthesis with a chemical equation. Here, the plant will use us the water through roots. It will absorb the water. The plants through roots will absorb the water, and through stomata in the leaves will take place and absorb the CO two in the surroundings. Means the stomata which is placed in the leaves will. open the pores will open and that co2 means carbon dioxide will enter into the stomata and in the presence of sunlight and chloroplast the chloroplast is present in the plant leaves which is the chlorophyll chlorophyll is a green color pigment as you all know that okay and these will cut combine and it will leads to give the glucose water plus means h2o plus co2 gives rise to sunlight and chloroplast glucose okay this is the chemical equation and there was a sunflower plant where the roots are absorbing water in the blue color you are seeing in the picture the roots are absorbing water from the soil and the carbon dioxide is entering into the leaves through the gut cells of stomata and the light was sunlight energy was directly absorbed by the plant in the transpiration process as you all know the transpiration is a process by which will get outlet the water the waste water of the plant will outlet from the plant this stomata is responsible for this transpiration process same in this carbon dioxide will also enter through the stomata let us in detail with this carbon dioxide entry see here there was a stomata of the leaf with when the gut cells get open the carbon dioxide is entering through the stomata Okay I hope you understand this photosynthesis process the whole process which I had explained now is the process of photosynthesis the plants which are capable to prepare their own food in the process of photosynthesis okay let us go into the another topic of this first chapter nutrition as carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis let us know how it is necessary take a potted plant with long narrow leaves and place it in a dark room for week days for 7 days and after 7 days take the potted plant into the sunlight and take a split cork and place it on the leaf and attach a wide mouthed bottle to that with a koh solution in that bottle the potassium hydroxide will absorb the carbon dioxide the leaf which is in the bottle okay and after that place it for 4 to 5 hours in the sunlight after the sunlight was absorbed to the plant take a leaf which has been placed in the bottle after 5 hours take the leaf which we have placed in the bottle and take a test tube and place that leaf in the test tube and take a beaker place the test tube in the beaker with filled with the water and boil that beaker for few minutes and after that take that leaf and you have to apply iodine solution throughout the leaf which is boiled in the beaker and after a 15 to 20 minutes you will observe that the leaf which is inside the koh solution will not turn into blue black color and the leaf which is outside the 
KOH bottle will turn into the blue black color as you seen here see the starch formed which is in the outside of the bottle and there is no starch of the leaf which is placed inside the KOH so it is proved that the carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis okay this is the whole experiment you have to study the requirements here the parts were labeled there is, it was very easy experiment first the aim is what the aim for this experiment is does carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis and materials required are potted plant split cork wide mouth bottle koh iodine solution and a beaker and spirit lamp and test tube also the materials after materials required you have to start the procedure which i explained you now you have to start with the points by step by step after that you have to draw this diagram also and you have to side heading observation and you have to write the what you have observed in this experiment and after that result the result is what the carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis you have to write your opinion and this is for this experiment okay let us go into the next topic see here this is also another the experiment which is oxygen produced during photosynthesis in the presence of light does oxygen is produced during photosynthesis let us know now okay take a beaker which is filled with water and take a funnel where you have to take a hydrilla plant and you have to fix that hydrilla plant in the funnel and you have to turn in the opposite way and place it on the beaker without entering the water okay and after that take a test tube and you have to close the opening of that test tube with your thumb and place the test tube in that funnel you have seen in this picture you have to place this test tube in this way okay after that you will observe the oxygen bubbles will come through the hydrilla plant in the edge of the test tube the all the bubbles which are in the hydrilla plant will comes to the top of the test tube here we can observe that the oxygen is produced how take the test tube which is filled with the bubbles take the test tube and place in the above of match stick take a match stick and place it in the above of the test tube then the match stick will get lighted so this is a proof the oxygen is present in this experiment so oxygen is produced during photosynthesis in the presence of light okay this experiment was also important so please go through with the materials required and the procedure operators and the observation and please study this diagram carefully and you have to draw this diagram for the activity also okay let us go into another topic where does photosynthesis takes place as you all know the photosynthesis takes place in only plants right but in which part the photosynthesis takes place let us know now okay there is a chloroplast which is present in the leaves why plants are green in color the chlorophyll which is a green color pigment is inside the chloroplast of the leaf so the plants are green in color you know from the childhood right this is a very interesting factor that plants are green because of a chlorophyll present in the chloroplast of leaves okay this chloroplast is responsible for many process which help the plant to grow themselves and to make their own food okay there are many parts which are labeled in this ts of chloroplast here there is a membrane lipid globule stroma granum thylakoids starch grain and loop of dna these every part are very helpful to process of photosynthesis okay let us go in detail view okay and here there are two types of photosynthesis the first one is light reaction and the second one is dark reaction the light reaction is depend on on sunlight energy where dark reaction does not need there is no need to sunlight energy in the dark reaction okay in light reaction the membrane system captures the light energy the membrane system in the chloroplast will capture the sunlight and synthesizes atp and nadph okay it will enters the sunlight and it will synthesizes atp and nadph adenosine triphosphate and 
NADPH. After the light reaction, there is a dark reaction takes place without the presence of sunlight. But the dark reaction will use as the light reaction products. What are the products of light reaction? ATP and NADPH. Okay, the dark reaction will use these products and make the glucose. See how this will take place. In dark reaction, synthesizers of sugar takes place. This reaction not directly dependent on light but on the product of light reaction. See, it will take the ATP and NADPH which is comes out from the light reaction and it will give the sugar and it will give leads to the glucose. These two processes are mainly used in the photosynthesis. Okay, let us go in detail with another topic. Heterotrophic nutrition. I already told you about the autotrophic nutrition, right? Now we are discussing about heterotrophic nutrition. Hetero means another. Troph means nutrition. Means another nutrition. The organisms which are depending on other another organisms are known as heterotrophic nutrition. Let us take an example. Animals, human beings and some bacteria will also depend on other nutritions. So these organisms are known as a heterotrophic nutrition. And let us go in detail with this nutrition. Okay, the organisms food is digested outside the body. In these organisms, we the food is digested outside the bodies. Let us take mushrooms. In mushrooms, the food is digested outside the body and in bread molds and yeast and other organisms like elephant, lion, fishes and humans, the food is digested inside the body. Let us take our humans. Where does our food get digested? In our stomach. Means where the stomach is there, it is inside our body. So the food is digested inside the body like elephant, lion, fishes and humans. And the food is digested outside the body like mushrooms, bread molds and yeast. Okay, here we are taking an example of nutrition in amoeba. Here amoeba at the first stage is capturing some food. See here in the first stage the amoeba is capturing food. Here this is a food and it is capturing the food. Amoeba is in unstructured organism which is in an unshaped manner. There is no particular shape for amoeba. Okay, here the food is entering into the amoeba. See how it is capturing in the second step, it was opened through this food. And in the third one, it was closing, the food was entered. And in the fourth one, the amoeba eaten this food. See there is the food entered by opening of the amoeba. And amoeba will take place the food inside the body and it will open this outer layer and it will intake the food. This is the how nutrition will take place in the amoeba. And let us go take example of paramecium. How paramecium will get take the food. See here the red particles they are entering into the paramecium. This overall black structure is known as cilia. This cilia will get open this and will enter the food into the paramecium. And the waste materials which are placed in the paramecium will get outleted. See, there is a waste material outlet here. This is the process of paramecium, how the nutrition will get takes place. And these lobules are known as a food vacuoles. Okay, these are known as a food vacuoles. This is the process of nutrition takes place in the amoeba and nutrition. Okay, and let us go into the next topic. Nutrition in human beings. Nutrition is a very important while we will get the energy for the human beings as we are all the human beings and here there is a diagram which will get explained in a deep of how the nutrition takes place in human beings. There is an oral cavity which is a mouth it contains tongue teeth and here there is a, a small tongue also and in this oral cavity after the oral cavity there is esophagus I will explain in detail. This is oral cavity. This is oral cavity. And after eating food, we will chew this food with the teeth. We will cut these food particles into small tiny particles with the help of teeth. And after that, we will use esophagus 
to enter this food to the food pipe this is esophagus the pathway which is entering into the stomach is known as esophagus the food which we had eaten and this will enter through the esophagus okay and after entering into the esophagus it will enters to the stomach see this shape is known as a stomach let's go in detail picture of the stomach how it was used okay and here we are going to know in detail about the stomach see here there is a stomach where the gastric juice is released after the food this is the food the food enter already into the stomach and this is a gastric juice which will mix with the food material which we had already eaten and the pepsin is a protein digesting enzyme the pepsin is also placed in the stomach it will use it to digest the food and there is a hcl also do you know hcl is also present in the stomach hcl is very dangerous right then you have a doubt why hcl is used then why our stomach is not bursting is not burning let us know hcl is a hydrochloric acid to provide acidic medium for the proper action of pepsin here the pepsin is a protein digesting enzyme right the hcl is a hydrochloric acid to provide acidic medium here there is a protein digestive enzyme and hcl will provide acidic medium for the proper action of pepsin with the mixing of both hcl and pepsin it will give a balance equation and protecting from hcl there is a mucus layer to prevent the damage of stomach wall by the action there is a mucus also throughout the stomach this mucus will help to not get damaged by the hcl hcl is dangerous as you all know it is a acid so the mucus will prevent the damage of that hcl okay after the stomach the food materials which we are eaten will get entered in the stomach and after the stomach how it passed into the small intestine let us know see here the pyloric sphincter slowly releases the food into the small intestine here the food is entering through the pyloric sphincter into the small intestine while entering into the small intestine there are three juices where we use in liver there is a liver secreting bile means bile juice is present in this liver this is a liver liver will produce a bile juice to this material which are coming from the stomach and after that here there is a pancreas this is pancreas which is in a yellow color it will secrete pancreatic juice see there is a tube which is connecting to the stomach okay this pancreatic juice and liver secreting bile juice will get mixed with the material on the stomach which is entered through our mouth with the material in the stomach the food which is entered in the stomach is mixed with the bile juice and pancreatic juice after that it will enters into the small intestine through intestine secreting intestinal juice the intestine also will secrete some juices is known as intestinal juice after the material which is entered into that okay let us know about some enzymes and some juices here the pancreatic and intestinal juices they contains enzymes like trypsin lipase pancreatic amylase peptidases and nucleases and the functions of bile juice as you all know we had seen the bile juice coming from the liver okay so what is the use of bile juice what are the functions it breaks the fats into smaller droplets the food which we had eaten it contains some fats like oil or fat some there are proteins fats there are many things in our food which had we, we had eaten okay here the functions of bile juice the bile juice will break the fats into smaller droplets by providing more surface area for quick action of enzymes okay it will give a quick action of enzymes by breaking the fats into the small droplets and after that the bile makes the intestinal ph to alkaline so by that the digestion of fats and carbohydrates is facilitated the bile juice will make the intestine the ph of alkaline in the ph of alkaline the both fats and carbohydrates get facilitated okay let us know another intestinal carbohydrates proteins and fats in carbohydrates the amylase and disaccharides simple sugars these are simple sugars 
in proteins we contain trypsin chymotrypsin and peptidases these are amino acids and in fats fats are also known as lipids it contains bile salts lipase and fatty acids and glycerol okay these are the nutritions of carbohydrates proteins and fats in the human beings after that in the small intestine there is a very important thing which is used to get energy it is known as villi is placed in the small intestine the villi is uh, placed in a small intestine is in the form of finger like projections have you seen here there is a finger like projections blue red yellow these are a finger like projections see these okay here we are using the villi to derive a digestion to absorb the blood stream after the completion digestion in the small intestine and the stomach the villi will absorb the blood stream okay the nutrients which are in the this small intestine will get absorbed through the blood stream and we will get the energy through glucose and the extinct uh, glucose will be stored in the starch form when we are get dehydrated then that starch will get changed into the glucose and the glucose will use it for our energy and this is villi you have to know about this villi also in the detail view i hope you all understand this topic of nutrition in human beings and let us know after the small intestine after the small intestine here there is a large intestine the small intestine the villi will get absorb the blood stream and after that the waste material which is not get digested which is waste will enter into the large intestine the waste material will enter into the large intestine and after that it will come through the rectum it will come to the rectum this is the overall process of nutrition in human beings okay and the next topic we are going to discuss diseases due to malnutrition eating of food that does not have one or more than one nutrients in required amount is known as malnutrition there is no sufficient of nutrients it will lead to the malnutrition there are mainly three types of malnutrition calorie malnutrition protein malnutrition and protein calorie malnutrition let us observe what are the harmful effects of this malnutrition especially in the children in the present in this pandemic situation also the malnutrition is rising because there is no sufficient nutrient to the students or sorry to the children so there is a malnutrition will occurs in the great manner so let us see how the effects for the children okay for the first disease is a quasiorker disease this is due to protein deficiency in diet if there is no protein in a sufficient manner it will leads to get quasiorker disease body parts becomes swollen means they will become some large parts see here some children their stomach was fallowed due to accumulation of water in the intercellular space if there is no protein sufficient in the diet it will leads to the fallowing of their stomach parts there is a full water in the internal spaces intercellular spaces okay very poor muscle development swollen legs fluffy face difficult to eat diarrhea dry skin are the symptoms symptoms of the disease okay these are the symptoms of this disease if the examiner ask what is quasiorker disease or explain the diseases affected by malnutrition you have to write these three diseases okay and the next disease is marasmus this is due to deficiency of both proteins and calories proteins are very important thing we should make in the good manner in our diet we should eat the protein rich food okay generally this disease occurs when there is an immediate second pregnancy or repeated childbirth if there is a repeated childbirth for the mother then this disease will occur to the children okay this is very harmful because the mother will not get affected but the children will get affected through the process lean and weak swelling limbs less developed muscles dry skin diarrhea and etc these are the symptoms of disease okay and the third disease is obesity as present in this covid situations many of the people were getting obese because of eating more junk foods whatever it may be 
okay this is due to overeating and excess of energy intake it is big health hazard it is a big health hazard obese children when gross they will be target of many diseases like diabetes cardiovascular renal gallbladder problems and many other diseases we should be in a proper weight we should not exceed our weight these obesity will leads to very different diseases like diabetes cardiovascular renal and it will give you laziness also if you are overweighted it will give it will make you to sleep and it will leads to the laziness these are the three diseases which are affected through the malnutrition okay let us go into the another topic i hope you understand this topics okay next the vitamin deficiency diseases in this vitamin deficiency diseases there are main few vitamins you have to know about these in the daily life also you have to apply these vitamins because you have to know the general awareness about vitamins then you will be capable to explain to your family members and to other friends also okay the first vitamin is thiamine it is also known as a b1 b1 vitamin is a thiamine the resources are you can if you eat cereals oil seeds vegetables milk meat fish eggs if you eat these type of food items you will get these vitamin and the deficiency disease if you not eat these foods the deficiency disease berry berry and the symptoms are vomiting fits loss of appetite difficulty in breathing and paralysis if you not enrich with this vitamin thiamine it will leads to these symptoms okay and next vitamin e is riboflavin b2 if you the resources or milk eggs liver kidney green leafy vegetables you have to eat these resources to get the vitamin of riboflavin b2 and the deficiency disease is glossitis the symptoms are mouth cracks at corners red and sore tongue photophobia and scaly skin okay and the third vitamin is niacin b3 the resource the rich foods to get vitamin niacin is kidney liver meat egg fish oil seeds you have to eat the kidney liver of goat it is good for your health and meat egg fish oil seeds where egg is very important thing here in every vitamin the egg is in a common manner so you have to eat egg daily then the vitamins will get increased okay let us go for the deficiency diseases of niacin the pellagra is a deficiency disease the symptoms are dermatitis diarrhea loss of memory and scaly skin okay and the fourth one is pyridoxin b6 is a resource of cereals oil seeds vegetables milk meat fish eggs and liver deficiency diseases are anemia and the symptoms are hyper irritability nausea and vomiting fits okay let us discuss about the fifth one cyanocobalamin cyanocobalamin b12 synthesized by bacteria present in the intestine pernicious anemia is a deficiency disease lean and weak less appetite folic acid liver meat eggs milk fruit cereals leafy vegetables are the resources of folic acid deficiency disease is anemia both you had seen in the pyridoxin and folic acid are same deficiency disease diarrhea loss of leukocytes intestinal mucus problems are the symptoms of folic acid and the few vitamins we are going to discuss is pantothenic acid pantothenic acid resources are sweet potatoes ground nuts vegetables liver kidney and egg and the burning feet is a deficiency disease and walking problems sprain also next biotin ascorbic acid retinol calciferol tocopherol philoquinone these are the vitamins you are going to learn about for your exam point of view okay these are very important topics in the first chapter of biology in nutrition food supplying system you have to learn these all topics for your board examinations if you have any doubts regarding this chapter please comment in the comment box and share to your friends if you have any doubts share with me and please do subscribe to my channel in the next video we are going to discuss about respiration chapter in biology thank you for watching